So this is the story of how I found my great grandfather's house with uh, only help being an old photograph from the 1920s, uh, the early 1920s. And my great grandfather, Louis Alfred Montanden, immigrated to the US from Switzerland around 1887. And he and his children uh, left for America with his first wife. Now, they settled in the Midwest, but after the death of his first wife in 1911, uh, he decided apparently to go back to Switzerland. So by 1912, you can see that he has uh, acquired a ticket and returned. And by 1914, he's remarried to his second wife. Now, uh, at this point, uh, he apparently acquired this house, which I have this picture from around 1920-1923. And apart from this, there the only other information I have is from these old letters. Now, these letters are very um, general in nature, and there's no real addressing on the envelopes. Uh, the the addressee is definitely listed. Um, however, the uh, return address is not fully indicated, and in only one letter there is a return address of A. Montanden, Bull, Neuchatel, Suisse. So uh, uh, that's for Alfred Montanden, and Bull is the area. Uh, the, the, the city, and then the Chateau Canton of Switzerland. Uh, however, this was quite difficult, and I began to do some general searches using his name. And lo and behold, I turned up this article for a property at Bull um, near the Hotel William Till. And I began searching for this hotel, William Tell. However, there's absolutely zero data related to this. Um, however, uh, what's interesting about this article is it does say that this, uh, the uh, estate of Louis Alfred Montana is for sale uh, at auction, public auction. And it's, it does mention that it's close to the station CFF Columbier. Uh, and then it goes on to say that the house is composed of uh, six rooms, a veranda, has water, gas, electricity, a garden, etc. Um, but this still, uh, this gives me a little bit more information. Now, the fact that it's close to Columbia really helps because while searching using uh, Google Street, find that Bull also has a station and houses similar to this in appearance uh, are a few but something is not exactly right in identifying this house and perhaps I thought perhaps that it could be uh, leveled or you know destroyed at some point for some reason but going back to this reference and I find this again in a second article uh, which is again about the uh, uh, sales, and this is in 1932 after uh, the uh, the death of uh, Alfred Montanden's second wife. Uh, so it again mentions that this is close to the station of Columbia. So uh, I go back to one of the original letters, and this is. Uh, a letter of mourning with the black uh, boundary um, around the edge. And at the very top, it um, it's dated 6th of November from Colombier. So th it must be that they are in this area, of this specific area, and it's next to the train station. So I begin to look using uh, Google Street View, and I do find... 
uh, the following. It is a uh, property which which uh, definitely matches this uh, uh, description of being close to the train station. Uh, so if we look at this bird's eye view, we will see that the train station is in the, quite close. It's right next to this. However, on this plot of land, there are two identical houses which are parallel, one which is closer to the railroad t tracks and one behind it. And then looking again at the view from the train station, we see in the distance this house that matches the general characteristics of the photograph that I had. Now, uh, and then once again, looking at it from another aerial view, we see the two houses parallel. Uh, so there is a 50-50 chance that the house that I select will be the right one. I continue to look, and this time as close as possible, and I do see uh, architectural um, uh, themes from the picture. For example... There are various different eaves or, uh, to the roof or supports. Uh, there is the chimney on the roof. There is also um, a sort of support motif over windows, which matches that of the original picture. Of course, both these houses uh, must have been built at the same time, and they have this. However, most likely the... Uh, the uh, clincher here is that in the original house photo, you can see a chimney uh, on the far left corner. And uh, I actually, when I actually went there, I do see that uh, this house that's behind, that's farther away from the tracks, has to be it because the chimney is still there on the second house and it's clearly identifiable and I see all of the uh, main items uh, the architectural uh, elements of the house are still there there's a small area which had been a type of semi covered not quite garage but some sort of storage uh, area and it's now been turned into additional living space in the house but I am uh, now confident that I've found this house and w having gone there I verified it uh, visually and this is where I am standing uh, with the, the original photograph on my hands and the uh, house behind me but this this is definitely the house uh, due to the fact that um, the letters also uh, mentioned that there was an oat field uh, in front, so it ha there would not have been space for that oat field also in the uh, other photograph, which is or the other house, which is right next to the train track. So uh, this mystery has been solved, and uh, this is just this short story of how I found my great-grandfather's house in Switzerland uh, after only having an old photograph from the early 1920s. Now, he died in 1930. Uh, I made my trip in uh, 2022, so the 1923 picture and my being there was spaced by exactly 100 years. And uh, this was... A very nice feeling to have um, touched base with somebody that I never um, had any contact with in my whole life and had only heard stories of, but uh, I finally had a link with him. So uh, I should mention that my great grandfather had been a uh, boitier, it, it's um, a sort of a watch case maker. Um, that's his profession of approximately. Uh, 15 to 17 years before he went to America 
and he and his brother were both trained in this profession, and they were probably trained by, uh, uh, or very possibly trained by, or worked with my uh, great grandfather's uncle, who was uh, Felix Alphonse von Tenden, who was a very famous watchmaker in the middle of the 19th century, uh, and he is the only uh, watchmaker, von Tenden watchmaker, who signed his watches. Uh, Alphonse Montenden à Traverse, because this is, of course, in the Traverse Valley. Um, however, uh, that's just a small note for the record. Thank you for your attention.